I know, I know, I know. I said I was going to do an update right away. And now it's like a billion months later and I still haven't done it. But in my defense, I do always say everything on the internet is a lie. I've said that more than once. Wait a minute. If I put this on the internet, what does that mean? Now, for whatever reason, after I published that first video, the squirrels stopped coming around. The best explanation I can come up with for this is that somebody leaked the video to whatever the squirrel equivalent is of YouTube, and it was so devastatingly embarrassing that they just simply weren't going to give me any more material. Now, less likely scenario might be that during the summer there's more plentiful and easier sources of food than my feeder, or perhaps it has something to do with the fabulous Mr. Fox here, who I know for a fact appreciates all the squirrels that I have in the backyard, because occasionally he leaves me a little thank you note. Aw, poop and a tail. Isn't that sweet? By the time fall rolls around, we are starting to see some renewed interest in the feeder. Now, I don't keep track of who's who in my squirrel population, but I'm guessing this guy's a veteran based on how cautious he is. Squirrels will have two litters a year, once in the spring and then once again in the fall, and it takes them three months to leave the nest, so we should be seeing some new squirrels pretty soon. Even the youngest squirrels learn pretty quick that you can't just jump on the lid. That's, of course, assuming that you even make it that far. <laughs> We're getting into late fall here, and as far as I know, there have been no incursions into the feeder as of yet. But have a look at the lid here as this one spins it around. You can see it's been chewed to shit. I did not actually see that happen. And most of the time, the feeder is facing so that I can't see it. <laughs> so yeah, a bit of a surprise there. Now, I did consider doing something about it, but it really smacked of effort, and before I knew it, Winter had come, so uh, I just put it on the back burner. And besides, that pole is damn slippery, so that added an extra level of deterrence. And then one fine winter morning, I look out the window, and there's a squirrel. He's sitting in the feeder. Uh, I look over at him, he looks at me, freezes for a second, and then takes a flying leap off the feeder. It looked like one of them may have finally cracked the code, so I got out the cameras and started recording again. I was a little bit disappointed to see that the feeder had finally failed, but at the same time I was kind of excited to find out how he managed to do it. I was pretty sure that this is the squirrel that had figured it out, but if he had, it seems like he may have forgotten. <laughs> I gotta give it to this one. It didn't give up and it tried different stuff, which was kind of interesting. Some sort of trick? No. Here we go again. <laughs> Holy shit. I'll apologize for the shitty audio in advance, but this is where I have my epiphany. <laughs> See, the, the wire is twisted now. That's the problem. Yeah, if you get on it now, hmm, may not go down. So we have to keep those wires apart. Oh, see, there you go. Yep, 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 yep. That's the problem. Oh, fuck. Okay, well, let's put an end to that quickly. <laughs> If we just go back to the previous attempt here, we can actually see this happen. As the squirrel falls off the lid, watch what happens to the two wires that are coming down from the pole. They end up totally twisted up on each other, and that facilitates the next attempt being a, well, a success, I guess. Which brings us to our very first feeder modification, the Cable Spacer 3000. I 3D printed this one, but you can pretty much use anything. Just got to keep the cables apart, and that will prevent the twisting for the most part. You can see how effective it is here. And no. <laughs> Interesting that I didn't bother to fix up the chewed up lid business. I guess I'll never understand me. And just when I thought I was master of my own domain again, this happened. What the? 
How in the world did he manage that? Holy crap, there he is again. How is he doing that? We might have a problem here. Go on, get out of here. It took a while, but eventually I did catch him in the act. Have a look at how he manages to get in there. If you blink, you might miss it. And in. So that's actually pretty damn impressive. I think it might deserve an instant replay. So he kind of shimmies down the pole here and then claws his way to the edge of the lid. At which point he just lets himself fall. A full 180 in the air only to grab the tray. It's amazing. <laughs> And that brings us to modification number two, a little plastic surgery I like to call lid lowering. All right, so all I did here was lower that lid about four or five centimeters and we'll see how he makes out with that. So now it's just a waiting game. Increasing the separation between the top of the pole and the lid completely <laughs> screwed up this guy's routine. You can totally tell he's trying to figure it out, but <laughs> there's no way. There were a few more attempts just like this one, and then nothing. So I assume a fox ate his big, juicy, genius brain. We're into early spring here, and this uh, fresh-faced little rodent decided it might take a little bit of a more direct approach. Yoink. <laughs> this one hasn't figured it out yet, that you can't just jump on the lid. <laughs> Oh, see, this is how the chewing starts, I guess. Oh, oh, barely hanging on. Oh yeah, it's trying to chew through the plastic. Little fucker. I wonder how long it'll sit there doing that. That's just insane. Yeah. Hey, asshole. Yeah, you. Quit that. You're just wrecking shit. Oh, I just don't know what to do about that. Um. <clears throat> well. I mean, I guess eventually it could chew its way through, but fuck, that's just crazy. And this little guy here. <laughs> oh yeah, see how badly it's damaged over there? That's right, give up. Now, admittedly, this guy is pretty funny, but I just didn't want it to completely wreck the lid. I can't let this happen. Too irritating to watch this. Hey, asshole. And that brings us to feeder hack number three, the Squirrel Dental Dam. Made from high-grade aluminium flashing, this stuff is guaranteed to feel terrible on tiny little squirrel fillings. And that put an end to that nonsense. I guess it was kind of a stupid oversight on my part. I should have anticipated they would hang off the edge of the lid and try and bore through the side like some sort of plastic crazed gerbil. But hey, if you're not making mistakes, you're not learning anything. At least that's what I keep telling myself. Little Chewbacca here has been dealt a fairly significant blow, but he's not out of the game yet. What the? You've got to be kidding me. Completely chewed through the retaining ring there. I don't know how I missed it before, but looking back at the footage, you can actually see the exact moment when he communicates that he's going to screw me over good. It's not the first time that I'd seen him have a go at that ring, but for some reason I thought that the wire PVC combo would be enough of a deterrent. Just like humans, some squirrels are real thinkers and other ones just like to chew on shit. I guess we should bring her into the shop for a bit. Introducing feeder hack number four, the gums scratcher. Something like this might have been a better solution right from the get-go. Well, better late than never. So let's put this on. Let's squeeze it all together. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, come on. There we go. Just like that. And good luck chewing through that, asshole. And I've left lots of little spiky bits here just to irritate the crap out of them. And that is where we stand at this point in time. Basically, the feeder remains undefeated, although I think we need to give the squirrels one point for this freaking crazy move here. There was also a brief moment where I thought maybe they were going to actually cooperate, but uh, you'll see what happens. Well, there's a surprise. Some squirrels are actually just jerks. With most of the kinks worked out of the system, this is the kind of thing I see most of the time. That must be fucking annoying. <laughs> I don't know what this guy thought he was going to do. He's got a death grip on the window because there's no real sill on the other side. I thought for sure he was going to fall, but nope. And then, some days you look out the window and you're not even sure what the hell you're looking at. Oh, looks like this little fella has a taste for diabetes. Damn, this is... That's just not healthy, buddy. Not healthy. Holy crap, idiots. For those of you unaware, that is a hummingbird feeder, and that squirrel is drinking what, like 80 proof sugar water that's been sitting in the sun for a week? Good lord, that's gross. Now you know that shit's not good for you, eh? Now this one's got what the young folks call moxie. <laughs> Just climb back up. This next attempt is from about two months ago. Not quite sure where he's going with this, but seems interesting. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. What are you going to do? You can't get in there. <laughs> oh. Oh. Same squirrel, same day. What's the plan, Stan? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, a couple weeks later, I catch him at it again. I'm sure he's figured something out by now. Squirrel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and here he is again, two weeks later. I gotta give it to him. What he lacks in brains, he makes up for in tenacity. Which, uh, actually, now that I think about it, kind of describes me as well. Oops. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Better luck next time, buddy. <laughs> I think I might have to make those inadvertently wise words my epithet. Better luck next time, buddy. And that, I'm afraid, is where we'll have to leave it. So if you just skip to the end to find out whether the feeder is still working, I can happily inform you that it is pretty much functioning as it was intended to. The few modifications that became necessary were pretty cheap and easy to do, so yeah, not so bad there. And as much as I enjoy screwing with the squirrels, the whole point of this was of course to give my birds a little space to enjoy the party platter. And that they do. Now I'd be a fool to promise any sort of, uh, you know, further update at this point. But you know, if something crazy happens, I'll probably end up throwing it up there. And that, my friends, is, as we say in the business, the end of the video. To take us out, I will leave you with birds eating bird seed. Thanks for watching. Cheers.
Actually, maybe it's not young, maybe it's just super old. That might be my fate, just sitting in my food. Look at this poor fucker. Dear oh dear oh dear, looks like somebody got dropped off at the shallow end of the gene pool. Look, we got some double woody woodpecker action going on down there. They're gonna like that log. Well, they'll chop it up for me. That's awesome. Keep going, boys. <laughs>